The Node-RED Contrib Modbus library allows Node-RED to become a Modbus slave or master device. A Modbus slave device is traditionally thought of as a PLC or RTU. It's the electronics out on the site um, and it can be read. It's sitting there and it's just waiting for a Modbus master to pull the registers and, and the data out of it. So for starters, if you want a Modbus slave, drag the Modbus server to the workspace. There's really not much to configure aside from the port. You can deploy this now and read um, all the Modbus, different Modbus registers. They're there, they're just all zeros because they haven't been set to anything. And then the simplest way to make a Modbus master is to do a Modbus read. You can see here where we could um, type in the unit ID, the function code, so what do we want to read? So let's say a coil, address, and then how many of them? Then how often do we want to pull? One critical thing to note, you can have multiple Modbus slaves but change the port on each one. Otherwise, when you deploy, they will conflict with each other and Node-RED can crash. To get up and going a little quicker than the previous videos, we're going to import some code. So we're going to go to flows.nodered.org. We're going to look for Modbus demo. So this demo is going to show us how to use Node-RED. We've got Modbus Server, Modbus Read, and Modbus Writes. So let's go ahead and copy this. Import clipboard. And deploy. So let's start looking at these one at a time. We have the Modbus server, and this is just for debugging. If you want to see all of the messages, you know, the read and, reads and writes, you can view that. Now, the Modbus server, whenever you deploy or Node-RED starts, it comes up and everything is zero. So you're going to need to build something to retain values and to preload those values. So this is a little example where Whenever we start up, we're going to inject once on startup, and here's a couple delays, and we're going to use these functions and a Modbus Flex Writer. The Modbus Flex Writer is valuable because you can write to any different type of register. There's no configuration in it. You just send it what you want to write in the message object. So let's look at a couple of these. This one says we're going to do a function code 15, which is going to write multiple coils. We're looking for the um, Modbus slave device address 1. We're going to start at register 0, and we're going to write 4. And here are the values. We're going to set them all to false. We're going to do a similar thing to some analogs here. These are holding registers. Um, and here are the six values we're going to write. So observe, whenever we deploy, let's go ahead and make a slight change. Deploy. This inject sets these timers off. We're going to read the value. It was zero because we restarted. Then the startup values were loaded, and then that register went to 100. Now, for much more simple read and write, Here's the simple read. We've got Modbus slave address 1, function code 3, which is read holding registers. We're starting with address 1, and we only need 1, and we want to read it every 5 seconds. And then this right here, same thing. Function code 6 is preset sing single register. If we click this inject node, it should write 24 to this first register. This is the one we're looking at. So you can see when we write, this is what we're writing to the register, 
and then five seconds later we read the register. So this is just a cool example to show you um, how you can read and write to Modbus devices. One more thing to note, you can connect to many different Modbus devices and when you set up a server pretty much you just need to set up the type. So is it Modbus TCP, Modbus Serial, um, what is the IP address of this Modbus slave device we're going to connect to? What is the port? And that kind of gets you started with Modbus.